Suppose I tell you that I was out playing darts last night and I threw a dart and hit the bullseye. Then I take you to an empty dartboard, place a dart in your hand, and ask you to stick this dart in the dartboard at exactly the same place where my dart landed last night. Your dart is a point estimate, and that point estimate will be very precise. However, because you cannot know exactly where my dart landed last night, you will be entirely confident that no matter where you place that dart, you'll be wrong. The big question is, how wrong are you? A little or a lot? You do have one thing going in your favor. You know an interval. If you place your dart anywhere inside that metal ring of the bullseye, you can be very confident that you are in the right general location. And if you're particularly clever, you'll place your dart in the exact center of the bullseye, further minimizing the error of your guess. Here we have a trade-off between precision and certainty. The point estimate, the dart, is very precise, but not certain. The interval estimate, the bullseye, is very certain, but not very precise. However, the point estimate and the interval estimate work together to give us the best of both precision and certainty. In statistics, rather than trying to be 100% certain, we're going to specify a level of precision that we are comfortable with. And typically, we're going to use a 95% confidence interval. A 95% confidence interval is a range of values that contains the population parameter 95% of the time. As we look at this confidence interval, we see that there is a lower limit of the range, there is an upper limit of the range, and in the middle is the population mean. The population mean is our point estimate, and the upper and lower limits are defined by the margin of error. Therefore, an interval estimate is the point estimate plus and minus the margin of error. What is 95% of a normal curve? Using a standard normal distribution with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, a probability of 0.05 gives us the confidence interval of 95%. We can see that the proportion in both tails is defined by 1.96 standard deviations. Therefore, to get the lower limit, we would start with our sample mean and subtract 1.96 times the standard deviation. The upper limit would come in the same way. Start with a sample mean, at this time add 1.96 times the standard deviation. The z sub 0.95 of positive or negative 1.96 is our margin of error. How could we express our level of confidence? This interval has been established at the 95% confidence level. The confidence coefficient is the confidence level being expressed as a probability, for instance, 0.95. The most common confidence levels will be 90%, 95%, and 99%. And you will note that the confidence level and the alpha level are always inverse. Add them together, they always add up to 1. For a confidence level of 90%, the alpha is 0.10, or 10%. At a 95% confidence level, alpha is 0.05, and a 99% confidence level, our alpha level is 0.01. Each of these correspond to a very specific z-score from our normal distribution. What happens to the width of our confidence interval as we specify higher or lower levels of confidence? A 90% confidence interval is defined by the dotted orange lines. The 90% confidence interval will be the same width as the distance between those two dotted lines. As we create a confidence interval for each new sample that we draw, Many of those confidence intervals will include the actual population value, or mu. However, several of these intervals do not contain mu. If we were to increase our confidence level to 95%,
that would widen the width of the confidence interval. And now we see that more of these confidence intervals contain the mean of the population. Bumping it out to 99%, we can dramatically increase the confidence interval because in this case, every confidence interval is capturing that true mean of the population. What we can learn is that with a higher confidence level, we get wider confidence intervals. But as you can see, we have a trade-off of specificity. The wider those intervals get, the less specific they are. They can become so broad that if we wanted a 100% confidence level, we would simply predict the mean would be between the minimum and the maximum in a data set. It becomes so broad that it is not useful anymore. We need a level of specificity. How then should we interpret a 95% confidence interval around a population mean? We would say that we are 95% confident that the interval defined by the mean plus or minus 1.96 standard deviations includes the population mean of mu. It is tempting to say that this interval has a 95% probability of containing the population mean. And that is true, but it is an oversimplification. For every sample that we draw, we create a new 95% confidence interval. So this confidence interval does contain the mean 95% of the time for this sample, and only for this sample. However, other information affects the probability of the population mean being inside of this interval. And so clearly we have more to learn about creating confidence intervals around a mean and also around a proportion.